the hills and valleys that lie northeast of Kenya's Lake Victoria are rich and fertile. The Bantu peoples till the soil and graze their cattle as they have always done. But in so doing, they have overcropped the grass and weakened the good heart of the soil. For these people know nothing of proper pasturing and manuring or crop rotation. The villages are remote and isolated. Small groups of simple huts of dried dung and mud where the tiny communities strive for self-sufficiency, plying their essential crafts, making their clothes, flatting their baskets. For food, there is maize meal. Only sometimes is there meat and vegetable to give it balance and variety. This meager diet and the hard toil causes the people to age quickly and die young. They have yet to learn that drinking water must be kept clean and pure, and all too frequently there is fever and disease. In such a village, Omolo lives. Omolo who works on his land as his fathers did, using the same tools, the same methods. Omolo's wife, too, works in the fields. It is hard work, for they have no plow. The land must be made ready for sowing, so that there will be more food. Quickly, quickly, Omolo. Your house and all your possessions are burning. Thatch, baked and dried by the tropic sun, burns like tinder. Omolo's tools and food stores, almost all he possesses, are destroyed. A cooking pot is all he has left. Omolo tells his troubles to the head man. Harvest is not for many moons. Now I have nothing. How shall we live? You must go to Bukora, says the head man. And he tells Omolo that he has heard of a farm where there is land and food and shelter for those who will work and learn the farming ways that the government teach. At first, Omolo is unwilling to leave the village, but at last he sees the headman's wisdom. And soon he is saying goodbye to his friends and neighbors as he and his family begin their journey. This is a great adventure, for never before have they left their village, and they cross many miles of unfamiliar country before they see Bukuro's white houses, neat and strong and inviting. Such houses as Omoro has never seen before. It is well that they journeyed, for the officer says that they may stay, may live and work at the government farm. They are all allotted to a small holding to be shared with other students taking the Kenya Agricultural Department's two-year training course. There are oxen and ploughs to till the land. This is much better than anything Omolo knew at the village. He is taught to drive a clean furrow in the good, rich earth. He learns to plough in contours to save the fields from becoming poor and barren, as often happened at home when the rains washed the topsoil away. Here Omolo's cattle are not allowed to roam at will, for at night he must bed them in a shelter. And by day, they must be grazed in a properly fenced and planted pasture. See, already they fatten and thrive. Manure, he learns, is good for the soil. This is news to Omolo. At home, they knew nothing of this. Dung was good for building huts. But for making crops grow? What nonsense was this? But here, the dung from the cattle must be carefully collected and spread on the ploughed up land. Omolo was progressing rapidly. And there was more to learn in the classroom. Which kind of seeds were good for planting and how to know them. How to care for the growing crops. Whilst outside on the training farm, there was rice to be planted. Together with students who themselves would one day become teachers, Omolo listened and followed. 
He knew that the valleys of this land were often choked with useless swamps. Now he learned that they could be cleared and made into paddy fields where rice could be grown for sale in the market. There are friends to meet and deals to be done. For those of the crowd who might need medical care, there is a dispensary. But at Bukora, one learns that good health is more than a matter of cures and medicines. So on his plot, Omolo starts to build a house that will be bright and clean and good to live in. For at Bukora, they teach how such a house may be built. And Omolo has expert advice and willing helpers. When it is finished, Omolo is proud. For it is beautiful both outside and in. is proud, too, of his crops. Crops that he has grown. Roots and sweet potatoes, rice, and well-laden fruit trees. So, for two full years, Omolo and his wife work, gaining new knowledge and skill. quickly, and now Omolo and his family must leave. He is happy as he journeys home, for he has food and clothes and much learning. And across the plain and hills lies his native village. Little is changed, but Omolo has much to tell. We will build a house, just such a house as we had at Bukura with strong white walls and wide windows. As the house grew, the people came to watch. And they saw that these were indeed wonderful things that Omolo had learned. They saw how his crops grew stronger and his cattle grew fatter. Now Omolo's village is slowly changing. But in most of the villages in the vastness of East Africa, no change has come yet. Ignorance and disease still live unchallenged in the mud huts and impoverished fields. Every opportunity must be given for the people to learn the new ways of life.